everybody and welcome to this latest episode of The Money Man. Now today we're going to talk commemorative banknotes and this one is not a new banknote. It's been around for some time but I wanted to feature it because it's really interesting. It's a really quite easy banknote to get hold of and it's cheap. So if you're a new collector or collecting on a budget I think this is a fantastic one for you guys and it's got a lot of really rich history behind it. So without further ado let's have a look at the obverse of the note that I'm going to feature today. So here it is. So you can see this is a central bank of the Bahamas $1 note. And it's a really interesting banknote because it is a commemorative, but it's celebrating something that happened hundreds of years ago, which has no direct connection to the modern nation state of the Bahamas. So you might be thinking, well, what's going on there? Now, the history of it is complex. I will try to paraphrase it as much as possible. But you can see this note is kind of unusual because it's dominated by this huge vignette of Christopher Columbus. Now, how is he connected to the modern nation state of the Bahamas? Well, if you look over to the left side, you can see it says Bahamas, first landfall, 1492, quincentennial. OK, so we're talking 600 years ago. Something happened. First landfall. What is going on there? Well, I will show you a map in a moment that will explain what is going on with that. But you can see that this is a wonderful commemorative banknote and it's pretty much celebrating or commemorating um, the events of Christopher Columbus's first landfall in 1492. So do keep that in mind. Looking at the design of the banknote, I absolutely love the aesthetics. Really nice banknote indeed. And this one was produced by the Canadian Banknote Company. So you might see some slight design similarities with some of the older Canadian banknotes. So there we go. So a map of the general region I will show you in a moment. But what I want you to focus on here is the serial number. You can see we've got a wonderful radar serial number. This is my own banknote, of course. Um, you can take it for granted that whenever I show banknotes in videos, I do own them. They are my images of my banknotes. And I will always say in the video if I do not own the images or I do not own the banknotes featured in the video. So that's just a rule of thumb just to let you guys know. But this one has got a nice radar serial, hence why I picked it up. Now, if we have a look at a general map of the Caribbean, and the Atlantic Ocean, I want you to focus on that solid blue line coming from Spain, passed through the Azores, all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, down to San Salvador. Now, actually, it kind of loops around and eventually lands on San Salvador. Now, San Salvador is supposedly um, one of the islands of the current nation state of the Bahamas. Now, I say supposedly because there is some debate as to what that island actually is, because I don't believe... Um, the name of the island that was given by the Spanish is not the current name used by the nation state of the Bahamas now. It's made up of many islands and some historians debate which island he actually landed on or which one they called San Salvador. I believe that is the contention there. But apparently his first voyage, the first time he made landfall in the Caribbean was on this island that is now within the modern nation state of the Bahamas. And of course, Christopher Columbus's voyages brought an entire wave of generation after generation of European colonialization for all the good and bad. And there was probably quite a lot of bad. There was a lot of bad that came with it, hence why Columbus can be a contentious figure. But it's kind of commemorating that huge momentous change. It's not really focusing on whether it was good or bad. It's just an, an acknowledgement of the reality of what occurred in 1492. So there we go. And you can see we've got this uh, wonderful um, uh, depiction um, here of uh, Columbus uh, apparently landing on San Salvador with the flag of Castile in his hand and his uh, entourage in tow. And you can see there, there were natives on the island actually um, now, the connection to Columbus and the modern nation state of the Bahamas goes a little bit further than just him landing on territory that is now within the Bahamas. Um, because of the European colonialization that came after Columbus, you have these islands being involved in so many different events which expanded the population of the Bahamas. So there were slaves that were brought over in the transatlantic slave trade to work on the plantations. And they were the, those plantations were on the Bahamas. 
when they were freed by the British Empire, they became part of the regular population of the Bahamas. Um, during the American War of Independence, some of the loyalists that fought for the British Empire um, in that conflict were actually given refuge on the Bahamas. So there were several thousand uh, Americans of European descent, some African Americans who had sided with the British, came down and were put actually on the Bahamas um, after the war, the, the American War of Independence was lost. Um, so you've got these interesting expansions of the Bahamas population that are initially connected to that first landfall, that first inception of European colonial interests into the region. So that's why Columbus is kind of connected to the modern population, the, the ethnic makeup if you will, of the modern state of the Bahamas. It's probably the best way I can kind of paraphrase it. But there we go. So if we have a look at the reverse of the note, you can see we've got the Bahamas, the islands that make up the Bahamas. We've got some of the wildlife, which, of course, we are all accustomed to today. But maybe those Europeans that landed on those islands had never seen things like flamingos before. They would have been completely new and exotic to them. Um, so that would have been an interesting, and I guess these are indigenous uh, wildlife to the islands. And you can see we've got those three ships of the initial expedition. Um, I'm not kind of sure what kind of ships they are. The galleys or carvels, I'm not sure, but um, you can see that we've got those ships there. And then at the bottom right, we've got the coat of arms of the modern nation state of the Bahamas. There's so much history in this banknote. It's really, really fascinating, and there's so many stories to tell that came after Christopher Columbus's expeditions. And of course, he went back later on as well. So I could go way deeper on this topic. That's why I think it's such an interesting banknote, because there's so much to discuss. And especially if you get into the argument of whether Christopher Columbus was a force for good or bad. That's a whole argument. Actually, I don't even want to touch with the 10 foot barge pole, to be honest, because it's messy. But you can understand why there are lots of layers to this. Let me know what you think about this banknote. Do you think it's interesting? Do you think it's worthy of celebration? Do you think it's a celebration of fact? Or is it actually celebrating Christopher Columbus himself? I would love to know what you think about this one. I find it really, really interesting. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. It's The Money Man, signing out for now. Bye-bye.